The Australian dollar fell about two cents this week to lows around 74 and a half cents, its weakest level since late July. The drivers of the Aussie dollar decline were very much offshore with Australian domestic news broadly neutral for the currency. Updates on Australian business and consumer sentiment were little changed over the month, but still slightly in positive territory. Australia's August employment report was quite mixed. There was a disappointing 4,000 fall in total employment, but full-time jobs rose. The unemployment rate fell to 5.6%, that's the lowest since 2013. But when the unemployment rate falls at the same time as total employment falls, that means there's a lower participation rate in terms of the number of people actively seeking work. So all up, a mixed report consistent with the Reserve Bank's view that the labour market is showing growth overall in employment, but isn't particularly strong. Still, overall, pricing for another RBA rate cut by November is only about 25% and that's a source of support for the Australian dollar. Meanwhile, Australia's key commodity prices are holding up well, still strongly up over the past year. So the damage to the Aussie was very much driven by global volatility. There's been a sharp increase in the volatility of currency markets, equities and bond markets this month. In particular, there seems to be growing concern over central bank monetary policy in particular, how long can the European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan continue to buy government bonds? These concerns over central bank bond purchases have caused global yields to rise steeply. This includes the US Treasury, where the 10-year yield has risen above 1.7% for the first time since the eve of the Brexit vote in June. This rise in global yields is certainly undermining the Aussie dollar, which is attractive to global investors when yields are falling. But while US 10-year interest rates may be on the rise, the probabilities for another Fed hike next week are falling. Fed Governor Brainard spoke this week on the inflation outlook and made clear that she doesn't support a rate hike near term. And US August retail sales were much weaker than expected. Pricing for a rate hike at next week's meeting is down to only about 15% and even that might be a bit high. Instead, we'll be mostly focused on the updated quarterly forecasts of the Fed members on GDP, inflation and interest rates. Those are likely to be quite soft and to undermine the US dollar. Australia's calendar is very quiet in the week ahead with only passing interest on Tuesday's RBA minutes from the September meeting. This leaves a focus very much on the FOMC meeting as mentioned, but also meetings from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand on Thursday, which should be on hold, but particularly on the Bank of Japan's meeting on Wednesday. All indications are that the Bank of Japan is very divided about what to do next. If the Bank of Japan's not sure about what its next step will be, then no wonder markets are also unsure. A very volatile session is likely on Wednesday and perhaps beyond. They could just keep policy on hold, or they could increase the volume of bonds that they're buying, or they may cut further the negative interest rate that they charge on deposits for banks. That's already at minus 0.1%. They may lower that to minus 0.2. Whatever the Bank of Japan decides is likely to be a source of volatility for global markets. We expect that this will be one of the factors that weighs on the Aussie at times in the week ahead. It may fall as far as, say, 74 cents, but if the US Federal Reserve does keep rates steady and lowers its projections on interest rates, then that should support the Australian dollar and may see it back above 76 cents. All up, it's likely to be a volatile week ahead. We'll speak to you next week.